Welcome to the Bladed Tech Channel's 40th edition of the Space and Tech History Rewind. We are reviewing the milestones that occurred on each day in the week of March 15th to March 21st in space exploration, science, and technology. March 15th, 1985. The first internet domain Symbolics.com is registered by Symbolics, a Massachusetts computer company, on this date. The company went bankrupt 11 years later. Symbolics is perhaps best known for its contributions to the Lisp programming language and the use of its software for CGI used in the movies Star Trek III, Jetsons the Movie, and Free Willy. Symbolics.com is currently owned by the domain name troll Napkins.com Investments. The practice of using a simple, memorable abstraction of a host's numerical address on a computer network dates back to the ARPANET era. Each computer on the network retrieved the host's file from the computer at SRI International, which mapped computer host names to numerical addresses. The rapid growth of the network made it impossible to maintain a centrally organized host name registry, and in 1983, the domain name system was introduced on the ARPANET and published by the Internet Engineering Task Force. March 16, 1966, the Gemini 8 mission was launched on a Titan II rocket from the Cape Canaveral Air Force Station's Launch Complex 19 on this date. The crew was Armstrong and Scott. The flight was 12 hours in duration. The capsule splashed down in the Pacific and was retrieved by the destroyer USS Mason. The mission's objective was to dock with the Gemini Agena target vehicle already in orbit. Docking was achieved six and a half hours after launch, following several hours of station keeping maneuvers to test the Gemini spacecraft. Unfortunately, an attitude and maneuver thruster malfunctioned 27 minutes after docking, and the crew was forced to undock, reestablish control, and deorbit. March 17, 2010, U.S. Air Force Major General and Pioneer X-15 space plane pilot Robert White died on this date. He was one of 12 pilots who flew the North American X-15, an experimental space plane jointly operated by the U.S. Air Force and NASA. He flew the first 16 of the program's 199 flights. The X-15 could reach 67 miles in altitude, although White's highest flight was 60 miles. The X-15 was critical to the development of the Boeing X-20 Dinosaur and the Space Shuttle, with the latter actually entering operational service in 1981. White was a combat veteran of World War II, the Korean War, and the Vietnam War. He flew the X-15 from 1960 to 1963. Following the Vietnam War, he was promoted to a series of aircraft development commands, and then as the Commandant of the Air Force ROTC program. He ended his career as the Chief of Staff of the 4th Allied Tactical Air Force. He retired in 1981. March 18, 1993, U.S. Air Force Major General and Pioneer X-15 space plane pilot Robert Rushworth died on this date. He flew 34 of the X-15 program's 199 flights, more than any other pilot. Rushworth's highest flight was 54 miles. Rushworth was a combat veteran of World War II, the Korean War, and the Vietnam War. He was assigned to the X-15 program from 1957 to 1966. Following the Vietnam War, he was promoted to a series of aircraft development commands, ending his career as the vice commander of the Air Force Systems Command Aeronautical Systems Division, which was responsible for new aircraft like the A-10, the F-15, and the F-16. By the time of his retirement in 1981, he had flown over 6,500 hours in more than 50 types of aircraft. March 19, 1923, the U.S. Navy discontinued its development contract with U.S. rocketry pioneer Robert Goddard on this date. During the previous three years, at a total cost of $2,000, Goddard had developed a rocket-propelled depth charge and an anti-ship missile with an armor-piercing warhead. The Navy was unimpressed and saw no future in rocket munitions. 
Following Germany's devastating, if not overly effective, use of thousands of rocket munitions in World War II, the U.S. Navy rethought its position. The first practical development were ICBMs for nuclear submarines, followed by the repurposing of cruisers for missiles rather than heavy guns, and then eventually the outfitting of aircraft carriers and battleships with cruise missiles. Goddard died in 1945 and was not able to witness the validation of his ideas. March 20th, 1959, a U.S. Army task force under the direction of Major General John Medeiros of the Army Ordnance Missile Command was formed on this date to develop a plan for establishing a manned lunar outpost by the quickest practical means. The effort was called Project Horizon. The first phase of the project was to make a limited feasibility study with estimated time and costs. The operational deadline was 1966. Project Horizon was never put into action, but its objectives are illustrative. A 12-man outpost was thought to require 220 tons of equipment and supplies at a cost of $6 billion. An additional 120 tons of cargo would be lifted to the moon in its first operational year. The outpost crew, who would be soldiers rather than just astronauts, would be armed with shoulder-fired low-yield nuclear munitions and specially designed anti-personnel claymore mines. Power to the base would be supplied by small nuclear reactors. The outpost would be supplied with two types of surface vehicles, an earth-moving machine and a dump truck, which could double as a reconnaissance vehicle. At the end of the outpost construction, construction quarters would be converted to bioscience and physics labs. March 21, 1942, a secret report was submitted during the Manhattan Program suggesting the name plutonium for artificial element 94 on this date. The element was named after the dwarf planet Pluto, so chosen because elements 93 and 92, Neptunium and Uranium, were also named after planets. The paper was held secret until after World War II, when it was published by the Journal of the American Chemical Society in 1948. The authors were Glenn Seaborg and Arthur Wall. Following the syntax of the Planetary Naming Convention, Element 94 should have been called Plutium instead of its eventual name, Plutonium. Seaborg is said to have explained, quote, It just sounded better. The chemical symbol chosen was also not straightforward. The scientists chose PU instead of PL because they thought the first and third letter combination, quote, looked better. Before we get to the current event of the week, we wanted to see if you enjoyed this 40th episode of Bladed Tech's The Space and Tech History Rewind. If so, click that like button. Did you agree with our choices, or are there other events that were better? Go ahead and share with us by dropping a comment below. And if you have suggestions for an event in the future, we'll take those too. We'll credit events we pick for future videos to those viewers that post them. We hope you have been enjoying our content. Have we earned your subscription to our channel? If yes, and you have not yet taken the opportunity as of yet to subscribe, please take a moment to do so now and click the bell notification icon so you don't miss upcoming videos. We want to continue delivering great content to you. You can always unsubscribe and subscribing is free. On March 11th, 2021, Lou Ottens, the Dutch engineer credited with inventing the audio cassette tape, died at age 94. An estimated 100 billion cassette tapes have been sold around the world since they were introduced in the 1960s. Otten's invention transformed the way people listen to music, and there has even been a resurgence of the cassette in recent years, in spite of the popularity of music streaming services and MP3 players. Otten's was also involved in the development of the compact disc, and more than 200 billion of those have been sold worldwide to date. In 1982, when Philips showed off a production CD player, Otten said, quote, from now on, the conventional record player is obsolete. He retired four years later. The rest, as they say, is history. Links to some of our most recent episodes can be found in the description section below. 
You can peruse our entire 200 plus video library by looking at our playlists, which can really sort videos by subject. We announce all new videos on our microblogging accounts, as well as in the community feed for this channel. Want to know how to navigate our channel content? We refer to RetroTech and Innovation Documentary segments as episodes. Coverage of current events in space exploration, science, and technology are labeled as shorts. Space and tech history are documented in an anthology called Milestones. And gameplay recordings can be discovered in the Bladed Tech Gaming Channel in videos called Walkthroughs and Side Missions. Stay connected by occasionally checking our Instagram feed, where we post content from our upcoming episodes and from episodes past that you may have missed. And finally, join us on our Facebook and Minds pages, where we cover current news and events related to channel content. Thanks for watching.